All right, so today is May 11th, 2015, and we are starting uh, questions off here. Let's see, we're going to start with Ganesh. For a local lead gen site, southfielddentist.net, I've created Facebook and Twitter profiles and put a post every three to four days. Is that enough, or do I need Social Explosion or a similar tool? I've used 5PBNs, and it's still in page four for my keyword, Southfield Dentist. That site actually... Generated my first call last week. Congrats, congrats on the call. Um, I mean, is that enough? Is It's a tough question to ask because it's not really... It's probably not about the social, why you're not ranking yet. It's probably because uh, those links just haven't fully kicked in yet. Or if you did them a long time ago, um, it's probably because uh, a little anchor text situation you got going on. Uh, optimization. So, my guess is that the links probably haven't kicked in yet, Ganesh, uh, all the way. and Just give it time. But if you want, you can show me the uh, anchor text you use, and I can show you uh, different stuff to do. And you can also tell me, you know, how long ago you did those PBNs. Because remember, you know, links can take a while to kick in now. You know, I'm, I'm noticing some sites, honestly, where... I did links many months ago, like four or five months ago, that are just kicking in now. So, then of course you do some links that seem to kick in, you know, a lot quicker within like a week or two. So, I mean, my guess is you just need to wait a little longer, but you can give me more details if you want. From Slav, mysite.com slash blog versus blog.mysite.com. You seem to suggest to create a subdomain, but would it be okay if I stick with mysite.com slash blog to grow my demand authority? Yeah, it's fine, Slav. I actually don't do much with subdomains, love. Uh, Jimmy Kelly does more of that type of stuff. Uh, but, I mean, either way, it sh should be fine. It's generally going to do the same thing for you. There's a little more tricks you can do with the subdomain, but, uh, I mean, I don't I don't even really use those myself too much. So, Alright, Ganesh. I used the OMG Command Center Restore Content feature and restored the old content for a PBN. It was formerly a middle school. But now I'm thinking it's better to use it as a regular blog so I can put up articles so as to link out to three to four different money sites in different niches. It's better to use it with the old content or better to use the WP blog with articles in a blog format. The PBN seemed powerful, the DA of 32, trust flow, citation flow 10. Um, I mean, I mean, it's not really better or not better. The good part of putting up the old sites, it's, it's quick and easy. Uh, especially if you know how to FTP, you know, you can just download, upload that file, and, and you're good to go. And not only that, but you have a whole bunch of content up. You know what I mean? Like, it could be a, a site with 100 pages of content, and bam, you have a 100-page content site up. You know, instead of getting a link from a one-page site, you know, which which a lot of PBNs are, or, you know, maybe a few pages, you got a whole big site that you're getting a link from. The downside is... Uh, it's not really your content, so it's a little black hat. You're not actually supposed to use it. Uh, it's nice to use that at your discretion. Uh, you're almost never going to run into a problem with that. If 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 the old site owner does notice it, they may just email you and tell you to take it down. Uh, so that's the downside. Then, of course, the content isn't as... I mean, all around it's not as relevant, but you can kind of make it relevant. Like, when I rebuild a PBN like that, when I download the old content... I'll just kind of, I showed you guys this site before, um, where I didn't even do this, mattonthemainline.com. I've showed this quite a few of my coaching webinars. This was a site I bought for $8. It was actually an expired domain. I just put up the old site, and then I just put a link to Delaware Personal Chef down here. Um, and it took that site from, from number 40 to, we haven't checked this in a couple weeks, so let's see where it is. Let's see, it's not first page to number 12, all right? And that's all I did. I mean, it took me five minutes. I add the site to the host, uh, upload the old, you know, download the site from SERPT, upload the old site, and just throw in that link into the HTML file. Usually when I do this, what I'll do is I'll actually go into the content and, and kind of make it a, a little more relevant. For example, like right here, maybe I'll say, and also, you know, we... We have a location in the Delaware area. If you are l looking for a Delaware personal chef, we highly recommend. But, you know, I'll, I'll just put, like, a few sentences in, just kind of make it relevant, at least a little bit of relevant content. But 
you know, as this shows, even just adding a link in with no relevant content does still work. But uh, again, usually when I, when I care about it, I will, I'll at least put some relevant content around where I'm doing my link, you know, maybe a few sentences. Um, but, but again, doing it like this works totally fine. So, I mean, it's just up to you what you want to do there. All right, so let me get a new shot for Christina's. All right, from Christina. Thanks for taking my question. You're welcome, Christina. Just moved my client's site because I could not make it secure where it was hosted. When I did that, I found five duplicate subdomains of that three were live. I decided to change the themes and build the site by hand, leaving out the duplicate content of the subdomains. Now when I look into Webmaster Tools, I see over 120 listed 404 errors. I think it is the subdomains I cut out of the site. What was the best action to take with these 404s showing up? I'm not sure, Christina. You might want to ask that in the Facebook group. Um, I've never had that problem, so I don't know exactly what to do there. I'm sure there's plenty of people in the Facebook group that that would know what to do there, but I I myself have never had that problem, so I'm not sure, Christina. Sorry about that. From Ganesh, this site Jacksonville Appliance ranks high in the seven pack and organic with only one unique page, three or four inner pages with same content. Do you think citations play a role? How do they do this? I know it's a lead gen site. Jacksonville Appliance Experts dot com. They're number two for Jacksonville Appliance and Maps. And like number eight organic. Well, first things first, they have an EMD, uh, which which is huge. You know, we've talked about this before. When you have your keywords in your domain, it's, it's just very, very, very powerful. Yeah, so my guess is uh, there's definitely links they have that aren't showing up. Uh, you know, they probably have some citations that just aren't showing. A lot of times when you use citations, they won't show in these tools, but Google will find them way before these tools do. Or they could be using PBNs they're hiding from tools like this. Uh, but I can almost guarantee you they have more links than what's showing. And then what's really powering is just them having an EMD. I'm interested to see how old this site is. It's a few years old. So, you know, if they did linking, you know, even a, even a year ago, uh, they would have been fully kicked in by now. So it's not like it's a new site. So, I mean, my guess is they just have links that you're just not seeing in here. And then even if they're not keyword optimized, when you have an EMD, you don't really need to keyword optimize in a lot of cases because just the power of the links and then your keywords in your domain name is going to power you forward. And they've also, you know, they got Google reviews in here. So, the, you know, they've obviously worked on this site. You can tell by the reviews. But, yeah, they, they have links you're not, you're not seeing. All right, from Dan. When buying domains for our PBN, I know we want domains with a high trust flow, like above 20 or better. 
with as many good niche related links. I read recently we shouldn't buy domains unless the citation flow is within three points of the trust flow. What are your thoughts on this? I, I don't. I've, I've never looked at that, Dan, within three points. Until recently, I actually didn't even really look at trust flow, Dan, too much. And then I had a, a talk with Cotton. And uh, I'm starting to look at it a little more to kind of test with some more trust flow type stuff. So, you know, as I test more with it, I'll get back to you guys on that. But I never even really looked at trust flow too much before. And, and I did. I, I was obviously ranking very fine wherever I wanted. So. All right. From Larry. But but with that said, Dan, now that I've looked at my PBNs, um, you know, just showing the way I do them, like I look at quality links related to what the site used to be about. Like if it used to be about, you know, like an old science site, I want a lot of links about science going to that site. That shows me natural linking, which is what, you know, what I teach you guys to look for. And when I look up the trust flow, citation flow for those, they're usually at least 20 uh, for, for a lot of the sites I have. So, I mean, I, you know, I do have some in the 10 to 15 range, but a lot of them are above 20. But yeah, I am paying a little more attention to trust flow and citation flow now. So as I get deeper into that, I'll I'll let you guys know what I find. But I think it's also important to know that without looking at that, uh, I was doing obviously doing fine. All right, in Command Center, there is a new tool, as you probably know, that seems to filter out all the bad PBNs. Do you feel there should still be safety precautions made to make sure a domain is good enough? I mean, Larry, I showed you what I do in the uh, March, April, May Mastery webinars. I just take the, the site, so if it's like, if we're checking to see if this site's penalized, which obviously it isn't because it's ranked on the first page. And I'll throw it in, and I'll delete the period and do a space. And if it's still number one, and you have to have a site up for this to work. And sometimes you have to let it sit for like a week. Um, so it's still number one for that. Then you can do further tests, like take off the com. All right, it's still number one, so that's an even better sign. And then you can kind of take the title and test with that. You can test with like domain plus title. You can kind of get creative. There they are, number one again. So obviously they're not they're not uh, penalized. Whereas if you you know a site that is penalized, one of my old sites. You know, shows up number one for that, which is great, but that doesn't mean it's not penalized. The next, the 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 important one is deleting the period and adding a space, and then you see our our domains nowhere to be found. This is not our site. Uh, you know, these down here are on our site, so that's not a good sign. All right, that's not showing for that. All right, but I show that in the uh, March, April, May mastery webinars. All right, from Alex. So I'm going to build out a local Seattle rhinoplasty lead gen site. I've been listening to some of Becker's strategy on this. And it seems like a good way for me to make my first money online. My question is if I were to build emeraldcityrhinoplasty.net, would it be fine to just build a three-page site with the homepage targeting Seattle and the two inner pages being suburbs, or should it be done differently? Um, I mean, you can do it that way, Alex. I don't know what Emerald City is. I don't know why you would call it Emerald City and then target Seattle for the homepage. Uh, so, so maybe I, I don't understand what Emerald is. Let me look it up really quick so I can give you a good answer. I saw something about Seattle when I typed this in. All right, so maybe this is like a part of Seattle. Okay, so I guess maybe the nickname is Emerald City for Seattle. I didn't know that. Yeah, Emerald City is a nickname. Okay, so yeah, that would be fine. Um, let me go back to your question. Emerald City, Ryan Plessy, Target, Seattle on the home page, and two inner pages being suburbs. Yeah, that's totally fine, Alex. Just make sure that that is as deep as you want to go, okay? So, for example... You have it as Emerald City net, which is basically, you know, Seattle net. Same thing, it's a nickname. So you're not going to really be able to go outside of Seattle without it being kind of weird. You know what I mean? Whereas if you had, like, net, 
then you could target as much as you wanted. Like, for example, if this works out and you start getting a lot of leads and you're like, well, I want to expand to Philadelphia. Well, Philadelphia doesn't fit into emeraldcityrhinoplasty.net. Now, the way you're doing it's fine, but just just be aware that you can't expand on this site really outside of Seattle without it being weird. You know what I mean? It get turned to a successful site and then you can't, then, you know, the problem with that is you can't expand beyond the Seattle area really, uh, which is fine. You, you know, if, if you think that's all you want to do right now, you can always do another site and expand more on that. But just know that if it gets to that point, you're just limiting yourself to areas that, uh, that you can cover, which again is totally fine. So, j j but just make sure you know your plan ahead of time. Like, you know, I have plenty of sites like just like you're showing, where where I don't expand outside. I'm just making sure you know that, y you know, where this site wants to go, how far you want to take it. All right. And again, I do have plenty of sites like that, so I'm not telling you it's not wrong. I'm I'm just saying make sure it's what you want. Make sure you know your plan ahead of time. All right, from Larry, did going through Network Empire's four-part course make a huge difference in your career? Uh, yeah, I mean, it just expanded my knowledge on, on a lot of areas like RSS and, and social and stuff like that. And they just have different ways of doing it, and that's all, it's awesome. It's good to learn everything. What determines power the most in finding a PBN? Trust flow, types of backlink, social, or a good combination? Of my, good combination of everything, I would say, Larry. But, I mean, the main thing I still look at is just you know, relevant, powerful links to what the site was about. That always shows me a good, a good sign. What's up, Chris? Can you get much power out of domains with a small amount of trust flow? Again, I didn't really start looking at trust flow until recently. Um, but, but again, more, more, most of my, um, my PBNs had higher trust flow just because of the way I looked at them before. Without even looking at trust flow, they already had high trust flow. So my guess is that if they have a lower trust flow, you're not going to see as much movement, even though I haven't been tracking that much. Kind of from what I've seen from my own PBNs and kind of going back and looking at the numbers, I doubt you would see much movement with the with the lower trust flow. In your affiliate sites, do you promote more than one brand of a single product on a site? For instance, one brand of e-cigs on one page and a different brand on another or one weight loss program and a different on another? Yeah, absolutely, Chris or Larry. And I actually have a new affiliate site example coming up soon, by the way. From Chris, Christoph, what are your actual metrics for PBNs, trust flow, stage flow, DA? Do they need to be in the same niche? Uh, again, I cover this all in the uh, March, April, May Mastery webinars, but usually mine, uh, DA above 24, and then just, you know, I look more at the links. Trust flow, again, citation flow, I'm looking more into now, and I'll, you know, I'll get more back on that in, in the coming months. You did that site five months ago, Ganesh, it's from the first question. Um, if you did the PBN links five months ago, it's probably a problem with your optimization. All right, from Paul, I love your videos. Oh, you're awesome, Paul. I'm new to OMG, been a webmaster for a while, and took SEO Floyd's bullet course. It's an awesome course. Got a client, best Long Island home inspection. Wants to rank for home inspection. He has very low DA and trust and little links compared to his competitors. Where should I start? So far, I did about 50 citations and made the social accounts. Um, depending on how long ago you did those, you might want to start juicing up those properties, Paula. Uh, you can do that with like PBNs and stuff, especially like the Facebook and any YouTube video, Twitter. You know, just like we show in the Iowa City SEO series, you can start by doing that. And then once you get that, those juiced up, you can kind of see where you are. And then if you want, you can start sending PBNs directly to the site or start juicing up more. So, I mean, that's, that's where I would go if I were you. All right, from Byung, have you had more domains de-indexed after the latest PBN setup orientation update? Although I filed all the precautions, I still had some domains de-indexed. The weird thing is that some of my poorly set up PBNs are still on, but some that I set up with extra precautions have been de-indexed. Do you do anything else to be safe? Like, do not add or remove a link from the article after it's been published, etc. 
Beyond, I've had absolutely no problems with the indexing uh, since since I made the change with the host. So, I have had a, a I had a batch the index. There was like ten of them, and it, it was sites that I bought on Network Solutions and I transferred to GoDaddy. And for some reason, that de indexed all of them. Uh, my information was public for a little while, so I think my name might be flagged. Uh, like my email might be flagged that I'm using for that because. Usually when I get sites, I put privacy on right away or a fake name generator. Uh, so my guess is that the reason those were de-indexed was just because my my information was public for too long. And Google kind of flagged my information because they know I'm a PBN guy. But other than that, I've had no problems. Alright, so... Ganesh's anchor text is Southfield Dentist. Root canals and implants, Southfield Dental Care. Uh, you should be okay with that anchor text, Ganesh. Um, let me take a quick look at it. Might be the quality of the PBNs. I think you have Southfield Dennis in there a little too much, uh, Ganesh. Remember, when you have an EMD, you don't really need to do anchor text. Like, this was not an EMD. This would be perfectly fine. But when you have an EMD, you can more use the power of the links to do the powering rather than your anchor text because you have your domain name powering those keywords. So I, I would be a little more careful with your anchor text, especially with an EMD. Um, you have Southfield in every single anchor text. You have Dennis in all but, all but one. You, you, you would want to do more stuff like, you know, maybe like just Dennis by itself, dental care, and just the power of the links is going to power you up from your domain name being this. I'm guessing you're over optimized. It could also be a problem with link quality, but I don't have a problem. To, I don't have a uh, time to look at that quite right now. Yeah, so I think you're just a little over optimized there. You're, I mean, with Southfield Dennis being your EMD, you just have it too much in, in your uh, anchor text. That's unnatural. All right, from Peter, do I have to pay attention to setting up the PBN with WWW or without it? Can I do anything when my host does not offer the option to choose? Um, I usually set it up with with whatever the most links are, or the most powerful one is, Peter. It doesn't matter if they don't have the option to choose. You can always change it when you get into, the, into WordPress. Just go to Settings, General, and then add the WWW to it if it doesn't have it. In there, then click save. It will log you out and then add it to it. All right, I've been analyzing a competitor's anchor text. I don't see any anchors with the target text to the subpage or homepage using Ahrefs. They have good DA, but it's possible for someone to be hiding PBN links. Absolutely. If so, how does this work? Because I can see redirected links in Ahrefs, but none with target anchors. I mean, he could be having those links going to those redirected links, Chad, where you'd have to. You would have to put in the, the redirected links in Ahrefs and look at those individually. Or, like you said, he could be hiding links. Alright, from Steve. You mentioned in your KLKS video about overdrive links. Can you explain what these are, please? I did that video a while ago, Steve, so I'm not quite sure what I was referring to when I said overdrive. I would, ha I would have to see that video, Steve. Why do the different backlink explorers show such different values for the backlinking of some domains? In case of doubt, which one should you rely on? I, I mean, they're just different crawlers, Peter. You know, they 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 or aggregators. They they just get links in different ways. You know what I mean? Um, 
I mean, I just use them for different things. Like Open Site Explorer, I use more for PBNs. But then Ahrefs and like Majestic are going to show more links, so it's going to kind of give you more of a. It's going to give you more of an, a picture of all the links that, that a site has. So I mean, in the case of data, I'll rely more on Majestic or Ahrefs. From Dan, by using Tide Spider Spanker on on our domains, does this prevent sites like Ahrefs and Majestic from crawling our sites? And being able to report everything about our site from being displayed to others. Uh, when you set it up properly, yes, Dan. And he has training on how to do that. All right, from Thomas, new here, just purchased my first expired domains to use the PBNs. I'm looking to set them up on GoDaddy Unlimited Hosting, multiple accounts on a single IP. You discuss, you discuss creating private name servers for PBNs. Seems like since they all have the same IP, I would have a problem with a footprint, even with changing the name servers. I know it's ideal to host each separately. But any thoughts about multiple accounts having private name servers but sharing single IPs? You don't have to worry about private name servers the way we're doing hosting now, Thomas. Uh, again, check out the March, April, May Mastery webinar replays. This is replay number three this will be covered in. What I'm doing now more is I'm using shared hosting, and then you can put multiple sites on a shared hosting, but you can only use one of those from that host to a specific money site. All right? But I explain that in detail in uh, March, April, May Mastery webinar number three. And the way you're doing it's fine, Thomas. Just you couldn't use any of those sites for the same to link to the same site. All right? You'll get more of an idea of what I'm talking about when you watch that series, though. From Dan, I was using Who Is from Domain Tools. I noticed when you do a lookup, there they provide some SEO information like an SEO score, number of terms, unique and linked images, and number of links. How accurate is this information? I thought Todd's SS would block this. I'm not sure, Dan. I've never even looked into that. I don't even look at that stuff. All right, from Ganesh. If you're a Delaware Personal Chef site for the expired PBN, how do I put in the link? Do I have to go into the index.html file to make changes? Yes. So I just went into the uh, index.html, like I re upload the site, Ganesh, and then you just find the index.html file, and that's like your home page, and then you just go in there and just edit it. You know, like I went in, you know, have like a bunch of HTML code. So what I usually do is. I'll kind of just go into where where I want to put the link. So in this case, I wanted to put it after this right here. So you can kind of just do like a search for um. Oops, so I'm trying to highlight this. All right, whatever. Let's go back. So if I let's say I wanted to put it after this here. So what I'll do is I'll just bring up the the HTML file index.html. I'll just copy. Like if I wanted it after this sentence here. I would go to that index.html file. I go to edit find. Of course, there's nothing in here. And I find that term that I want, okay? And that will come up in the document. And then after the period, so it would actually say this in there, of course, with a bunch of other stuff. And I just add in, like, you know, my text here, blah, blah. And then a href equals http site.com and then anchor text here and then end of sentence all right so that will just put it in right after this you know it will say realtor in the country my text here blah 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 uh, you would have a linked out to anchor text here for site.com uh, and that's your link right there and then it'll just go right on to you know that text would be in between here and then it'll just go on to this so your text would just be right in between these sentences. All right, but that I mean that's how I do it. I just do edit find or wherever I want to put that text. I'll just put in the HTML code. If you don't know HTML, just look up basics. You know this this is pretty much all you need to know. This right here. All right, pretty basic. If anyone really doesn't understand it, let me know, and I can uh, I'll show a video of me doing it or something like that. 
All right, question on PBN quality. What do you think about links from forum comments? Can I count them according to their DAPA and PR value, or are they naturally lower to evaluate? Uh, I mean, they, they can be good, Peter. Um, you know, they can just be, they can be as quality as, as other links. Uh, but just, you know, if there's like a ton of them, you just want to be careful with that. You know, but in moderation, I, they can be good. It just depends on what kind of forum it's from and all that type of stuff. You wouldn't want to cite, obviously, with all, like, forum comments. I mean, I wouldn't. But, yeah, I mean, they're fine to have in there. All right, so using this information, I compared my site with my competitor's site, and I beat my competitor's site on all levels except for the number of links where we are tied. Yet my competitor has the number one spot on half a dozen keywords, and I am number two. What am I doing wrong? I've checked to see if my site is penalized the way he teaches, and it all looks good. How talks to see if my site being filtered... Is there a way to do this? Do you have any recommendations? If you're number two, you are not penalized, Dan. Uh, they probably just have better optimization or stronger, more relevant links. So you're, you're going to have to just power up your links or you know get some more relevancy. Probably just power up your links and you'll be fine. But it depends on the niche. What is your strategy for affiliate marketing? Uh, I have a new site coming up, Peter, where I'll probably be talking a lot more about affiliate marketing soon. Uh, I'm going to show you guys another e-sig site. Uh, it's doing about $100, $200 a day right now with very little work done to it. So, you know, that that will be coming out soon. I'll, I'll start taking that site deeper. You know, I'll probably eventually take it to, you know, 10 20 grand a month. All right. Every other day my menu is giving 404 errors for my pages, so I have to go in and click on post name and save, and it works again. I did I did everything on the 404 page. That was supposed to fix it, but it didn't. Do you have any ideas? I don't, Jeanette. Um, I'm not good with that technical stuff. You might want to contact your host about that. Again, I've never had that. Anything I like, I've never had experience with. I'm not good at answering. And unfortunately, I've never had experience with that. Maybe fortunately for me, but. All right, from Chad, one other question. I added social explosion to older sites. No penalties according to your test approach. This ranking on page three. Over the weekend, the site dropped back to page 11. Social explosion picked up older posts. Could that be the reason it dropped? Should I wait with social explosion and see if it comes back? Um, I highly doubt that's the reason it dropped, Chad. Uh, just give it time. It'll likely bounce back. I, mean, I don't know what else you did for the site, so it's hard to say. But I, I doubt that social explosion is the reason it dropped. From Young, do you prefer buying domains at auction? Do you try to find expired domains that you can just register with tools like Source Reviver, Screaming Frog? I think the OMG Command Center just add this feature as well. Have you tested it? I personally like auction domains better. You're gonna you're gonna find higher quality domains with uh, auction domains. But I uh, you know I mess with expired domains too, more for for the community than for myself. Uh, auction domains always do me better, but I mean expired domains work. Uh, the, you, again, you're just not gonna find as powerful ones usually. Is there a spider spanker equivalent for HTML sites? How would you hide HTML sites? Usually I don't worry about it, Norman, to be honest. I just don't hide them. All right, from Dan. What are the things I need to do to look at if my site has been stuck for several weeks at number 11 for most of my keywords? Uh, you need to look at your optimization. Uh, look at your competitor's links, see what they're doing differently. Look at the basics, like do you have keywords in your title? Um... You know, how, how is it your optimization between your anchor text and your domain? You know, what's what keywords are in your site? Start with that basic stuff and then start looking at and compare that to your competitors, Dan. Like, look at the top 10 and see what they're doing differently. Uh, if there's nothing you can find there, then go to links. You know, how are they doing their links differently? Where are they getting their links from? Uh, you might need either more relevant or more powerful links where you can start juicing up your own links. So, I mean, it really depends on. Uh, you know, so many factors that that I don't know. But, I mean, those are the basic things that I would start at. From Ganesh, we buy PBNs, expired domains for the backlinks and link juice, correct? Yes. But then we set up a PBN, we delete all the pages and posts and create new posts. When we delete old pages, would the backlinks be deleted too or do the link juice stay just because of the root domain? Uh, that's why we use Link Juice Keeper Ganesh. It redirects all that juice to the home page. 
from Eric. Hi, Greg. I have some good PBNs that I would like to reuse and retheme to point at different sites and maybe different niches. Any advice on how to do this without getting a penalty? Yeah, I mean, just put up the site, put up content, and link out, Eric. I mean, you'll be fine. Just make sure you're not creating hosting footprints and all that, you know, which we talk about in the March, April, May Mastery uh, series. From Cliff. Good afternoon, Cliff. After hitting an inner page, I'm trying to rank with five PBNs and social signals. It does not enter the top ten pages for a keyword that gets 590. What else would you do from here to get it to pop up? Stronger PBNs. It depends on how long ago you did the PBNs and all that, Cliff. Um, and it also depends on uh, the site you're doing. You said you did an inner page. Well, I'm going to tell you guys a big trick um, that, that not many people pay attention to. When you have an inner page you're trying to rank, sometimes sending uh, like a relevant keyword to your home page is going to do more to, than uh, sending a relevant link to the inner page. Like, like, for example, if you have a home page that has no links and you're just juicing up inner pages, you, that might not be doing you as well as if you were theming your site. Like, for example, you know, you take CottonGrammar.com. Cotton ranks for pretty much anything SEO. Why does he rank for that? Well, because he has a site that is themed around SEO. I mean, you look up CottonGrammar.com in our, in our backlink tools, and his home page is themed for SEO. Right. So let's go look at his anchor text. Was hold on. So this is just the home page. All right, so his home page, you see a lot of SEO stuff, okay? SEO, 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 SEO. When you have a site like this that, that he has a lot of demand authority, because these links he has are juiced up and he has more links you're not seeing, but all these links going to his home page are about SEO. And then his inner pages are also about SEO. So when you have a high DA site that is about SEO, and then you have your inner pages about SEO, it's going to it's going to make it so much more powerful and so much more easier to rank those inner pages. You know, another example, the, the, there's a guy right now in the e-cigarette market that ranks for all the old keywords that I used to. And let me tell you why. Um, this quit smoking, I mean, you type in anything, like the major terms that I used to rank for, he's ranking for all of them, and I'm going to show you why. You know, he's up there for all of them. Go look at him. Um, we, we can look at him and open his like explore. Let this load up. There we go. All right, so what does he have? He has super strong links from relevant relevant links with relevant anchor text. All about quit smoking. Electronic cigarettes, right in the same niche as quit smoking. Same exact thing, pretty much. I mean, look at all this anchor text. Quit smoking, how to quit smoking, quit smoking. So this guy found the perfect domain for this niche. Because not only does it have a high DA, but it has relevancy in the domain name and in all the anchor text. So that's why he's going to be very hard for anyone to beat. Um, I might try to beat him with my new site, but it's going to be tough because of the way that his site is set up. You know, he's got all these links going to his home page with relevant anchor text from relevant places. Uh, so that's going to be really hard to beat. So... For example, another trick I'll do is when I get an expired domain like this, like if it's about politics, guess what I start doing? I start sending links to the home page about e-cigarettes to kind of start retheming it. And, you know, people are aware of this, but it's something that has become more and more powerful uh, recently. You know, it's they're paying more attention to what's at the home page rather than inner pages. So, like, someone will set up a site, um, whatever, joesite.com, and then on the inner page they'll try to target you know, Chicago SEO, but 
JoeSlate.com has absolutely the home page has absolutely no links about SEO, which makes link ranking that inner page very tough. So sometimes when I get stuck, like for an inner page, I'll actually send the anchor text I want to rank for to the home page to help make the home page more about that topic. Because that's something that is uh, is coming more and more powerful with Google. They're looking more at what's at the home page compared to the, what the inner pages are about. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, from Eric, just so I'm clear, regarding expired domains and PBN domains found by the scrape domain method, do you recommend using expired scrape domains of PBN as long as the inbound links look natural and not spammy, even if the domain doesn't necessarily pass an initial penalty check? Uh, yeah, I mean, because a lot of those those sites, Eric, might not be strong enough to pass the penalty check. Remember, that penalty check is more for sites that that are a little more powerful. Uh, sometimes with the less powerful ones, you really have to use longer tail stuff to, to check. So it can be a little trickier with those types of sites. But, I mean, as long as the, the links go, look good. And, and, again, you can still do some type of penalty check. Like you can put in a really long, weird title, like, you know, maybe like the uh, – the igloo supernatural website, right? If you put that as your title, something just weird like that, and you typed it in, and you were on the first couple pages, you should you should be fine. But you can always use kind of little tricks like that, where you use longer tail weird stuff to see if you rank. All right, so let's go back. All right, from Eric, when building out a PBN, when do you think is a good idea to rebuild the old look of a PBN and when to just rebuild it however you would like it to look? Uh, I mean, again, I, I just, whatever you want to do, Eric. I don't think there's really a good case for it or not to do it. I just kind of mix it up, to be honest. And I just kind of play with things. From Larry, I know how to check for penalties after you have a domain, but what I was asking earlier was how you might check an expired domain prior to purchase. You can't, Larry. I haven't found anything yet. Good afternoon, Pete. I'm using EasyBlog Networks for building my PBN, which is awesome. So is my solution just to continue as continue to build more relevant site and get them linking to my site? It's just I'm getting a little scared. I don't want to get my main site in trouble. I've been adding a site linking to my main domain with all kinds of different anchor text about every 7 to 10 days. Is this a good rate, or should I speed up the linking, or is this a good rate? I've never used Easy Blog Networks. So I'm not sure how that works. Um, and I mean, your question really just depends on the situation, Dan. I mean, there's certain niches where you can get away with more links, but you know, some local type niches, you, you know, especially local, you want to focus more on higher quality, low amounts of links. I mean, I mean, that's that's across the board. You want to focus more on lower amounts of links, higher quality. That's always going to be better. But especially in local, so I mean, it just really depends on your on the situation. You know, for example, you got a city with fifty thousand people in it. You don't necessarily want to send ten PBNs of that. I mean, you you might just need three or four maybe, uh, and then just kind of be more patient with it. Whereas affiliate site, you know, if, it, if it's an affiliate keyword that gets ten thousand searches a month, you can move a little quicker because you can get away with more, sending more links to something like that. Hopefully, that makes sense. All right, from Dan, I got EasyBlog Networks to build 10 sites for me. They're all different but have a similar feel layout. Is this a concern? I wouldn't worry too much about that, Dan. I would worry more about, like, hosting footprints. In our PBNs, should we have an About Us page and contact us just for Google's benefit? I'm going to be honest with you, Andres. Um, most of the time, I, I don't. Uh, you, you know, you probably should mix it in. And, you know, a lot of the sites that I rebuild the old domain, uh, they they have stuff like that, so I don't really worry about the ones th that I build, adding them in. Every once in a while, I may. But, uh, I mean, that's just up to you. Why do PBNs get de-indexed? Uh, usually some kind of footprint, Andre. It's almost always from what I've found. Like hosting footprints, uh, stuff like that, IP footprints. Joanne, I have a client who needs his email moved. Any recommendation for email hosting? I don't know what you mean by that, Joanne. Needs his email moved. 
I mean, usually what I do is I set up an email on the domain name, Joanne, and just forward it to a personal email. But I don't know what context you're talking about with that. From Alex, thank you for your time. Very welcome, Alex. For my lead gen site, would I have to go out there and get addresses for each local location I want to rank for? My plan is to rank a Facebook, YouTube, and other Web 2.0 like that, but would I need an address to do all of that? Uh, no. You need an address to rank in the seven pack, Alex. All right, but, but I mean, yeah, each location you want to rank in the seven pack for, you're going to need a, um, an address for. But no, you, you don't necessarily need an address for Facebook and YouTube and all that type of stuff. From Norman, how did you go about getting your first local clients? My first client actually found me. Uh, I had a website ranking, they wanted to buy it. And then I just kind of asked them if they wanted anything else. How do you hide links? Do you only allow Google and robust.txt? What other messages are you for hiding? I'm just using Spider Spanker, Chad. I don't worry, honestly, I don't worry about hiding my links too, too much. There's a lot of hosts where Spider Spanker doesn't work because uh, of Ion Cube, and in those cases, I just don't worry about it. You know, I found more and more over the last, you know, couple of years that I'm, I'm, I'm probably <laughs> in the, um, one of the only people that thinks this, but I don't even know if Google has a manual review team, to be honest. Because, you know, I've told, talked about this before, my site, KLKS, it was powered by about 100 PBNs. I uh, didn't get touched for two years. You know, a huge example site. The whole internet marketing community, community knew about it, yet my PBNs never got touched. Um, the site, the website never got touched. In a huge niche. You know, e-cigarettes is big. Google knew about it. I, I can almost guarantee you that. Yet, my PBNs never got touched. They, they got touched when an algorithm change hit them. You know, when that hosting change came where you, you couldn't use so many links from the same host. So, I, I've never really been hit by something other than algorithmic. Um, you know, people talk about manual reviews all the time. I've, I've never been hit by one from, from what I... Like, everything I track back is alg algorithmic. You know, algorithmic. How do you say that word? Algorithmic. I guess that's how you say. So not manual. So I honestly I don't worry too much about hiding links. I mean I I will use Spider Spanker where it works, but and of course if you if you can hide them, it's it's safer, you know, because I guess competition could report you. I mean again look back at my example. You know I had a thirty thousand dollar a month site, you know, in the public eyes, and you think no one reported me? You, know, you think Google didn't know about it? But again, they didn't get the index until uh, an algorithmic change came along. So I mean, I just don't worry about it that that too too much. All right. From Steve, read the overdrive links. You were saying that if you don't have PBNs, then to use overdrive links as they are very powerful. You were talking about getting social set up, then do Web 2.0's high quality blog comments, guest posts, and overdrive links. Okay, yeah, that rings a bell. Um, yeah, I mean, you can always do that stuff, Steve. You know, PBNs aren't the only thing that works, but I think they're the they're the best tool. Uh, you can really do a lot with PBNs. But, you know, the new course more, Steve, that I want people to take, especially, you know, the newer you are, is to do that type of stuff first. You know, do Web 2.0s first. Do your social first. Um, do high-quality blog commenting if you want first. That way you can get you know, a, a base going, you can get some trust going to your site, I'll, more focus on social and that type of stuff, maybe citations of a local site, um, then you can, you know, you can move to web 2.0s and then maybe some blog commenting, guest post type stuff if you know what you're doing with that, but, you know, the point is to get that trust going first before you start sending PBNs to the site, and that's the course I'd rather people take now, just, just to be safer all around. All right, from Eric, do you build out your PBNs using different IPs from proxies or VPNs? No. Again, just like I showed in the uh, March, April, May Mastery webinar series, Eric, I cover that in uh, the third one. Uh, you know, I just use shared hosting, and I, I only link to one money site per shared host. But I show all that set up in that uh, replay. 
Ganesh, just wanted to let you know you can bring so much clarity. Can't wait for your new video on affiliate site. Awesome, Ganesh. All right, from Steve. I'm thinking of taking on a client in the real estate niche. I've never ranked a client in this niche before. When checking for keywords, there are three authority sites that come up, number one, two, and three for most searches, which are Zillow, Trulia, and Realtor. These sites have high DA and loads of links. Is it feasible to beat them, or is it better to tell the client not to bank on a number one ranking? It's definitely feasible to beat them. Uh, the other sites on page one also mostly have high DA. I'd imagine best strategy would be to use social and Web2.0 Web with DAS and PBN linking to Web2.0 or social to pass DAS or pass DA, do citations, etc. Is this the best strategy for a difficult niche, or do you recommend something different extra? Yeah, I mean, that's the best strategy for any niche, really. Um, Remember that if you get a site with the keywords in the domain name, you can really be doing yourself a favor because you don't have to. You, you can kind of more power it up with without having the keywords in your anchor text. Um, especially recently, sites like that where you have your keywords in your domain name, it's more just kind of like powering them up. You know, you don't have to worry as much about your keywords in, in your um, in your anchor text. You keep it more general, and then just the the power of the keyword in the domain name is what powers it up. You know, the the combination of keywords in your domain name plus powerful links is going to power it up. So I mean, you can go that route and really do yourself, uh, you know, a big favor. But if if you're going to do keyword optimized anchor text, just be very careful, and I would save it for later on down the road because a lot of the times you don't you don't even really need keyword optimized anchor text uh, with with those EMDs. All right, from Larry, are you an affiliate for Carol's Cook Tonight? Just wondering what the purpose was for using the site. It's just a random site, Larry. <laughs> I went and I uh, did a search uh, for Delaware Personal Chef. Um, I found a site on page four, the bottom of page four, that had little to no links, and I just used it as a test site. So, you know, they got a free three-page boost from me. All right, from Eric. That way, Larry, I don't have to build a test site wait a couple months for it to age and, and all that crap. You know, I just find a site that's been there for a little while. You know, obviously they've given up on the rest of the year. They don't know what they're doing. I'll just kind of, I'll, I'll do a test on it and boost it up. All right, from Eric, when you say for us to power up our links, do you mean for us to send PBNs to our PBNs? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, you can do PBNs to PBNs. That can get a little hairy, Eric, so just be very careful with that. Uh, more like sending PBNs to like social properties and like Web 2.0 type stuff. All right. From Peter, do you back up your PBNs? Uh, not not necessarily. No, I mean I'm not saying you shouldn't. You probably should, but I don't worry too much about that. From Dan, what do you mean by powering up my links? Just just what I answered with Eric, Dan. Like you know, sending uh powerful links to like social properties, web 2.0, stuff like that. You know, we, we did that with Iowa City SEO with that series. You can check out that series. Don't know why that closed. That was weird. Come on. One second, I just want to do a search for this. There we go. All right, so um, you know we show this whole series in your members area. I uh, know we're number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. And that's it. We had the top five there. Of course, we powered up these properties, which you know power up this site. Uh, even for Iowa SEO, without Iowa City, and remember, we didn't even we didn't even optimize for Iowa SEO that good. Yet we're still number one in maps, number one organic. This is an OMG here actually. Then we're number three with our YouTube video, number five with Facebook, number six for Yelp, and this is all off three PBN links. Um, I think I used three total PBN links for this whole project. And I didn't even optimize for Iowa SEO. You know, I, I did a little bit with the titles and all that and the descriptions, but 
for the linking, I, I didn't even optimize for iOS SEO. If I did, we you know we could take more of the top spots. So you know that series really shows uh, you know using less links and just kind of powering up those links. So you can check that out. All right, from Eric. I've been building out a local service lead gen site that targets about four different services in four neighboring cities. The on-page copy for a particular service is pretty much the same for each city's page. Example, tenal implant copy is the same on each neighboring city's page. Is this a bad idea? I know other sites like franchises do this. Um, I mean, it still works, Eric. It's something that maybe they could do away with in the future. So it just depends what kind of risk you want to take. But yeah, right now that does still work with uh, with local stuff. From Ludmail, the PBNs have to be related with the field and niche that I am planning to work. No, they don't, Ludmail, but if they are, it's going to be more powerful. From Larry, how would you suggest, would you suggest staying away from larger niches for affiliate marketing? Do you feel it's irrelevant for our, for our tactics? No, I mean, you can always dig deeper into the keyword research, Larry. And uh, I'll talk about that more as we um, reveal the new affiliate site. Because actually, I'm making money with that site with longer tail keywords. So it kind of gives a different example, which is pretty cool. Because remember, the KLCast example is more me ranking for big keywords. Uh, this is more ranking for like long tail stuff. and just showing you guys that you know simple works. Because it's a simple plain site, no graphics or anything like that. Um, ranking for longer tail keywords that basically needed no links to rank for. And it's making between 100 and 200 a day. So. All right, let's see. From Eric, when you rebuild a PBN, do you use an automated tool like the one offered by Command Center? Yeah, that, that's the only thing I use, Eric, is the Command Center thing. My Andres, I want to focus on, re on building affiliate sites. I'm really looking to your new site so I can have something to emulate. Any advice on where to begin or where to get top-notch affiliate programs? Uh, my advice is to start with something you're interested in, it, Andres, or something you're passionate about. Uh, that way, you already know a lot about it. It'll be easy to build up the site and, and stick with it. So, I mean, that's just the first advice from Chad. I'm so worried about hiding my links, but trying to understand the competitors. Do you mention both for Cotton's and the Jack's appliance site that we aren't seeing all the links in HRFs? If that is the case, do I need to worry about understanding the whole picture or just get down to link building? Just get down to link building, Chad. Now, as long as you understand what you're doing for your site, that, that's the more important part. For Steve, I'm also looking forward to your new affiliate videos. Can you tell us roughly when you think they'll be coming out? Is it an OTS series? Not really an OTS series, Steve. Uh, it's more I'll, I'll go over the site, kind of show you what I did. I'll progress it along. You know, I'll probably shoot video, random videos on it, stuff like that. But it should be coming soon, you know, maybe a week or two. I actually shot a video on it already. Um, so it just depends when they want to release that. From Steve, if you have a Google+, Plus, Facebook, Yelp, and other top social sites are linking back to your money site, is it best to point your PBNs at these sites to protect your money site? Um, yeah, I talk about this a lot in the training now, Steve. Um, I mean, it's, I wouldn't necessarily say it's better, but it's, I would say it's safer. And in the long run, uh, the way Google's going, it can actually be more powerful down the road, I think. Because Google's really, really leaning more and more towards less links, more powerful links. So, I mean, I think that's definitely the safer way to go. And obviously it works, as you see with the iOS SEO example. That's all we did here. We did, we did no links directly to here. Or, sorry, no PBNs directly to here. The only links going directly to the site are stuff like the YouTube video, the Manta, you know, stuff like that. Social properties. From Steve, what's your view on when to do citations? Cotton said don't do them until the site is about to go to page one. But someone else can't remember who, but was one of the coaches said to do them at the beginning. Does it matter when we do them, and if so, what's the best way? Uh, I mean, it's just it's a personal preference. Um, I'm fine with doing them right away. I, I just wouldn't do a ton of them right away, Steve. Maybe start with some of the biggest ones first. Um, you know, get your Yelp going, Facebook, stuff like that. And then just kind of maybe work on those properties. But, you know, coming out and doing 150 citations right away might not be the best idea. Just kind of focus on doing maybe 10 of the top ones right away. And then kind of take it from there. But, but yeah, that's my view on it. So let me see if any other questions here. Yeah, we got a few more.
All right, from Chad, those links from social properties appear to be no follow. Are the do file PBNs passing through to the money site? Not sure how powering no file links helps. Uh, no file links are still going to power you up, Chad. Um, I don't care what anyone tells you. We showed that with this series. And again, you can go through the series and see exactly how we do it. Uh, I mean, do file links are going to do more for you, Chad, but obviously it works. You know, we, we kind of showed that with the series. What tool do you use for your keyword research? Usually just my brain, uh, Google, Google Keyword Planner, that's it. You're welcome, Eric. I'm Steve. You're welcome, Peter. Can you please clarify anchor text for DAS, PBN, Weebly, Money Site, the keyword you want the money site to rank for is weight loss for moms. Do you have the anchor text on the PBN or Weebly? Probably on the Weebly. It depends on what the if the keyword is in the money site domain name or not. Uh, so likely PBN would be more generic. Uh, maybe stuff like plumber. And then this would be like Delaware plumbers. And then this would be like a Delaware plumber type website. But it depends again what the, what the uh, anchor text or what the um, money site is. But you, you want to focus more on keyword at the Weebly level. And then something similar to the keyword on the PBN. Maybe like just more, keep it more general. Alright. Finding it difficult to get multiple Google Plus with them asking for a mobile phone or verification. Um, I mean, I usually have other people set that up, Brad. So I don't, I haven't done that myself. So I haven't had a problem. But I got people in Fiverr who do it. Um, I don't know the exact. I haven't used it in a little while. But it's something with like an IFTTT people uh, where they set it up and Google Plus is part of it. And I just grab it from there. But I haven't done that myself. So I haven't ran into that problem. Alright, so last question here from Cliff it looks like. Does Anchor Text determine what 7-pack your money site is included in? Absolutely, Cliff. 100%. 100%. So basically what Cliff was asking is, can your anchor text help you rank in the 7-pack? Uh, and no doubt about it. I've tested on that many, many times. All right. So, you know, when you do your organic SEO, it's also helping your Maps SEO uh, when you're doing your, your uh, anchor text correctly. All right, everyone, I'm going to save this webinar now. I'm going to put it in the uh, put it in the bin, send it over to David. It should be up by tomorrow or so. Um Hopefully that, that affiliate site will be out maybe this week, maybe next week. I'll talk to David and Mike about it. And, uh, you know, we got a video on it, and I'll, I'll do as much as you guys want on it. So it'll be cool to get a new affiliate site in the mix. All right, guys, I will talk to you all next week. I should have a session uh, next Monday. All right? Talk to you guys soon. Thanks for coming.